I feel like in the 10 year, 10 or 12 years ago, it was people were living out of their vans and that was the big craze. But now it's to build these little tiny homes that you can move to different places or, um, or I guess just keep in one place, but also to be off the grid. People are realizing that this whole off the grid thing is like cool. Or if you, I guess if you really got into the solar part of it, you could even feed back uh, power back into the, into the grid and make money yeah. that way. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of Land Stories. Here with Generation Family Properties, where our goal is to help hundreds of people just like you own land. Well, I am honored to have a special guest with us, Albert Palma. Albert, how are you doing, sir? Good, good. Good, good, good. Well, you you were a customer, bought some land from us, and we're just trying to understand more about you and, and your experiences and all that kind of stuff. But before before we get into that, just tell us about your background, Albert. Where are you from? Where do you live? Where'd you grow up? All that kind of stuff. I'm um, from here. I'm from New Mexico. Uh, I grew up mostly in Albuquerque, but a little bit outside uh, in San Juan, for instance, way out in the Eastern Plains. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm from here, but I've traveled a lot to, uh, different countries, Mexico, Brazil, Colombia. I used to do human rights work, but, uh, by trade, I'm a civil engineer. So, um, I've been doing projects with other people in other countries, uh, mostly dealing with water or building things. Mm. So, so that's pretty much it. I, I came back to New Mexico, uh, about three or four years ago uh, after traveling and doing a bunch of projects and stuff and um, worked for a little while. And then when COVID hit, it kind of shut things down. So I started um, save, well, I just working off my savings and uh, buying lumber and buying uh, different materials because I knew I wanted to build like a tiny home or a cabin. So, uh, so well, let me, let me, let me just go, go back for a second, just to talk about, um, Growing up in, in New Mexico, um, I often tell people, you know, like New Mexico is such a hidden gem with so many, you know, forested areas, national forest, stuff like that. Like we went up, um, we did a road trip from Minnesota out to northern New Mexico. We were up in Red River area and um, that area was just gorgeous. We did some river rafting down the, the Rio Grande, closer to Albuquerque and just had had an awesome time. Did you do do stuff yourself, you know, going up in the mountains? And I think I've been to almost every single place in New Mexico. Like I know you want to talk about hidden gems, like there's so many hidden spots, like uh, you can name all the way down from the Gila and the in the southwestern part of the state, you can go to the northern part and have like really great fishing in the like the San Juan River, for instance. Uh, all the Route 66 stuff, if you're into like cars and into uh, that kind of like hist historical things. And I mean, New Mexico is one of the old, I think uh, it's one of the oldest places in it was one of the first places anyone ever came to in the United States. Like the Capitol building, for instance, is the oldest capital oldest um one of the oldest i think they call it the oldest administrative building in the united states wow that's so cool the spaniards came you know what I mean? wow you know where's where's your favorite spots you know like if if you're gonna go someplace where are you gonna go um let me see it depends like i said there's so many different places uh i would say i would say the gila is a good spot um i really like hamas the hamas area because i know people from the hamas pueblo but uh, I'll go to the Hamas for the hot springs. Um, probably that. And, uh, and if you go way, way down south into, um, uh, there's some other spots like, Car like around Carlsbad, Carlsbad Caverns and stuff like that. So. Yeah, no, it's, I've, I haven't been to a lot of those. So I have to add those to my, my bucket list of places to go check out. Um, what, with growing up, you know, what, uh, were you camping at all, you know, hiking, you know, what kind of stuff did you do when you were growing up down there? Yeah. Yeah. we we always do that mostly like fishing and, uh, and hiking. So like in the Gila, for instance, it's like canyons and, uh, you go down into those canyons and there's fish down there. The, it's a whole different like ecology on top. It's one ecology. It's kind of like dry, but then you go down in the canyons, a whole nother, whole nother ecology you'll see weird animals like ring-tailed cats and different <laughs> nice. uh yeah there's a whole 
there's a whole uh, set of things in the Gila. Um, and, and like I said, other places too, like, uh, like some of the Pueblo, around the Pueblos, they have a lot of tiny ponds and lakes that you can fish in. And uh, the all the different people in the different pueblos, Zia Pueblo, Jemez Pueblo, they're all really nice. So that's cool. Wow, that's so fun. Um, and you know, as, as you go along in life, you've been to all these places. You know, Mexico and and I think you said Nicaragua and Brazil, Colombia. Brazil, Colombia. Um, what's your favorite there? You know, if you could go back and spend time in one of those places, where would that be? I'd probably go back to Colombia. That's like one of the coolest places. There's not a lot of people especially when i was down there that was because of the conflict they, there wasn't a lot of tourists so any any tourists that did show up were treated like extra good and nice. uh it was cheap and it's just a really beautiful country you can you can drop a seed anywhere in colombia and the next day it'll be like a tree growing right there <laughs> it's like the most fertile land on the planet wow so i really so like cool. uh, colombia Columbia. and uh, with with being a civil engineer i would think you know kind of all the uh the uh the things that that um, projects and infrastructure, you know, all that coming around. Do you see yourself getting real busy, you know, with work and stuff? You know, I'm hoping. With, I'm hoping this infrastructure bill goes through and I can get back to doing, yeah, roads and uh, water waterways, watersheds, um, anything like that. I'm like I said, I'm hoping that uh, that infrastructure bill kicks in and we can make the roads and bridges like better here in the United States. We should have the top the highest quality in the world, but we're spending money outside of the country for other reasons. Yes. So yes. Uh, we got to invest in this country now. Man, no, what a what an important job, you know, just I think about the bridges, right? I mean, the bridges and all the infrastructure, the the water stuff. I mean, look at a story like Flint, Michigan, you know, we we need help <laughs> with all of that. There's crazy things that happen. Like you'll see a bridge collapse every now and then, that other building collapse in Miami. Like if Things aren't like the, they take a lot of the engineering for granted, but if things aren't exactly right, it could cost a lot of people their lives. So, man, boy, boy, yes. boy. So, um, you get back in the States, like you said, you're, you're come back home to New Mexico and, um, um, doing, doing your thing. What, um, what kind of spurred you, you know, to say, Hey, you know, I want some land for myself, you know, tell us about that. Um, like I said, I, well, after COVID hit, uh, we weren't working. So I started, I started saving my money and just, uh, I was really impressed by a lot of YouTube videos of people building the tiny homes and, the uh, and little cabins, like little getaway cabins and off the grid stuff. So, uh, any kind of off the grid stuff to me seems really cool. You know, setting up your own solar panel, setting up your own little water system, uh, setting up your own garden. Uh, all that off the grid stuff, I think, is becoming a lot more interested, interesting to people because they see that sometimes the cities aren't, you know, they're not the greatest places. Better, it might be better to have some land back, you know, somewhere where you can go to when the when the city, you know, when you get tired of being in the city, um, or it just gets too stressful. You know what I mean? So, so that's well, so that made me start buying uh, lumber. I started realizing that the lumber prices are going up after after COVID. So I started kind of like stockpiling lumber. And I was originally going to build this tiny house on my brother's land. Yeah. But then uh, but then he wanted it one way, I wanted it one way, and it was just not going to work out. So uh, luckily I found you guys and, and I was able to uh, to find some land way out, like uh, by the mountains a lot. But, and in a lot of ways, it was a lot better because the land that I bought was, I wouldn't say 100% better than the land that I was going to build my cabin originally so and what um tell us about how you decided on that on that county or that area you know like why did you choose the land that you did there was three spots that i was interested in one was the manzano mountains which if you're not familiar with new mexico it's like the kind of central mountain range then there's a southern mountain range um down uh it's in the southeast part of the state um let me see what's cloudcroft is the main city around there uh, or town, I guess, more like a little town. Or in northern New Mexico, you have uh, you have some really cool mountain spots, but that's a lot more expensive around Taos or around uh, any of those places. It's going to be really expensive. So um, those are my three ideas. I was looking to at those three different places, and when I saw you guys' uh, ad on the internet for the 
for the land in the Manzanos on the backside of the Manzanos, I was definitely interested and I knew, I kind of knew that area. It's, uh, it's actually a cool area where the Spaniards gave a lot of like land grants way back in the 1600s. And a lot of that culture still exists there, even 400 years later. That's amazing. That is so cool. Um, so you decided on the area and I took it, I think you connected with, was it Christy? Yep, Christy. And um, tell us about that. What was that conversation like and how did that go? Like I said, I was really apprehensive at first because it's the internet and I wasn't sure what the, what was going to happen or, you know, you don't really know when you're dealing with the internet, but I was, I was able to do some research and see, uh, you know, see other people's reviews, see reviews from the Better Business Bureau, seeing, uh, uh, like I said, other people that were happy with their purchases, seeing that they were real people. So that kind of gave me a lot more confidence. And then once we started the process, it was de definitely, you could see that you guys are really, uh, straight shooters and also uh everything went really smoothly so i was really happy absolutely no i'm so so glad we could help and um one thing that that came up kind of in our conversations was you know wanting the deed you know you wanted to actually have a paper copy of the deed you know which of course uh we sent to you which is not a bad idea at all i'm surprised actually more people don't ask for it um what uh what kind of led you to kind of wanting the deed you know i'm curious to know what um, I don't have a, for, you. for one, I don't have a, I don't have a printer, but I mean, you do want to have something kind of like in your hand just to put in your file or whatever, or at least, you know, something to show that you like a physical copy. Sometimes, sometimes with the internet, even though it, the government or whatever is getting more used to having everything electronic. And especially now we have to have everything electronic because you can't really go out to visit people because of the pandemic and all that. Yeah. So now they're realizing that you have to have electronic, um, transfers and stuff so but uh i'm old school i mean i'm i'm 46 now i i i'm still like i want to have a file and i want to keep things in the file so uh you know that's this that's just the way i'd like to i want to see like actual physical paper so that i mean that was good and like i said you guys got it to me really quick i even i i asked you guys for a some other things, but I had, I didn't even realize you had already ha got it to me a week before. So <laughs> I was, a, I just lost it inside of my, uh, inside of my Gmail. I didn't know where it was filed or whatever, but, uh, well, so well, you guys I, were actually way ahead of me. And I would say too, you know, just, um, the electronic stuff, the con is if you don't save it, right. I mean, so many of us get so much email, it's so easy just to hit the delete button without necessarily paying attention to what it is. And then it's in your trash or something and you might empty your trash and it's gone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that stuff happens. So I get it. You know, if I were in your shoes, I'd probably want the same thing. So, you know, anyone who's listening, we're happy to provide it, you know, no problem. You know, we're, we're happy to do it for you. Um, and tell, tell us about Albert, what are you going to do with the land? You know, you mentioned maybe putting a tiny home or something on it. Yeah, know? I've already started. I've been uh, going, it's about from here, Albuquerque is like the main city in New Mexico. Um, it's about, uh, it's exactly 62 miles from my house. So, and that's, you know, going up into the mountains. So I'll, when I go up there, I usually stay up there a couple to have a tent set up and I, uh, I usually go up there for uh, two or three days so I can work on this cabin that I'm building. And so I transfer, I transfer all the wood that I had been gathering up there. Um, and I mean, there's, there's obviously trees and different things. I mean, if I had a, some kind of a sawmill or something, maybe I can saw my own lumber. But I, I mean, I already had this other lumber saved. So took all that up there and little by little just uh, been building up. I have the floor done and uh, about two walls maybe set up. Nice. So today I'm going to go out there and hopefully get more of the walls done maybe get the roof going so it's really and it's just really nice and peaceful to be out there there's there's no one out there deers will, will just walk right up uh, i mean uh, so the cool. last time i was there i mean unfortunately a skunk decided to <laughs> walk up and he was not scared like he just <laughs> came up and he i don't know if he was trying to be friendly or what but it wasn't i wasn't <laughs> i didn't i didn't want to scare him or anything because but uh yeah so there's wildlife um but it's just really peaceful out there. You could just um, build, build things and, and uh, 
and I'm really, I'm really happy. Like I said, I'm hoping by the before the winter it really hits, I can, you know, have something. Well, you've, uh, you've already made huge progress. I mean, that's that is super quick. Well, and especially, you know, you you must have done a great job with buying the lumber because we know how crazy lumber prices went. Oh yeah, and stuff like that. And who knows, it could happen again. So good for you, man, for getting on top of it and, and getting it done. Do you envision like with your place, you can have a house or you're going to like have a, a garden or like a garage or, you know, paint for us the picture of kind of the final product. Well, like I said, the thing that really started getting me interested is on YouTube. Uh, there's like a whole, cra- they call it the tiny home, the tiny home craze or the, I don't know. It's like a craze between, it seems like mostly younger people, but uh, for a while, pe- I felt like in the 10 year, 10 year, 12 years ago, it was people were living out of their vans and that was the big craze. But now it's to build these little tiny homes that you can move to different places or, um, or I guess just keep in one place, but also to be off the grid. People are realizing that this whole off the grid thing is like cool. Or if you, I guess if you really got into the solar part of it, you could even feed back uh, power back into the, into the grid and make money yeah. that way. Yeah. So that's always been interesting, interesting to me. I lived when I was doing my human rights work, I lived in the jungle. I lived in really, really far out places. So I was really used to uh, that kind of like life with, with very little electricity and, um, and like fishing and things like that. So that, that started getting me into this idea of doing the off the grid tiny home. And uh, so little by little, I just been watching these videos, getting ideas, thinking about how I was going to do mine. And, um, and those are all the different processes. You got to get your structure up, obviously your cabin or tiny home. Then you got to get your electricity, which for me, like it's solar panels. I found some cheap solar panels here in New Mexico that that'll work. Nice. And then uh, water, like uh, you got to set up your water system. So it just so happens where I'm at the land that I bought, it's on a slope. And you could actually harvest some of the, I already started harvesting some of the runoff water just for my own personal use. But, um, but eventually, yeah, setting up, you got to set up your water and, uh, and then any type of like, what are you going to live off of? Like, uh, hopefully I'll set up a greenhouse and some, you know, some gardening stuff and uh, maybe some like chickens or goats or something. So that is one of the things out there is it's so like the land is so uh unused that it's almost overgrown so mm. now with all the fires and stuff like that you want to have make sure that your 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 land is like suitable so where it doesn't there's no kind of fire danger and things like that so yeah just cutting some of that that undergrowth out of there and um good yeah well you, you obviously know what you're doing and doing it right you know if you were if someone was talking to you that was like i have no clue you know, how to set this stuff up um, or whatnot. Is there like a YouTube channel you really love or any resource you could point someone towards that might help them out? Um, you know, the starting point for me, there was, there's this guy on YouTube called Bush Radical. His name, I guess he goes by his channel called Bush Radical. And he's, uh, I believe he, he built his first cabin in, in Alaska Anyway, this guy's he's a younger guy and he has like some really straightforward talks where he just comes on his channel and says, you know, people say you can't buy land like they're too, they don't have enough money to buy land. Like uh, I can't buy land, blah, blah, blah. He gives you like a really hardcore speech about why you should, where you can buy land, why you should go out and buy your own land and then what you can do to improve that land. I think what he does is he builds these cabins on, on land in the outskirts and then he sells them and he's, I think he's doing pretty good because he... I mean, he seems like he's, and his cabins look really cool. So not only do you get like kind of a pep talk about having your own land, but you get a uh, really cool ideas about how to build from a, he builds like from a little tiny box cabin all the way to like a, you know, to like a really nice cabin, like family style cabin. Nice. That's awesome. So that's that's kind of like what I envision is get this small, uh, small, like um, tiny home first. And then once I'm established a little bit, then start working on something bigger, something that's going to take like multiple years. You know what I mean? That's so, so cool. Very so that guy great. Bush Radical. And then there's a couple more. Uh, I can't really think of them off the bat, but if you just put in tiny home, they, there's a lot of people that just give you tours of different people's cool little tiny homes or or little homesteads that, they, that they're that they working on, like off the grid homesteads. So 
I think there's a, like I said, I think it's a kind of a big trend now to do the off the grid. So. Absolutely. Well, especially with COVID and, you know, all those things ha have having happened, getting your own space and getting away from people, you know, definitely having a hideaway spot. I know we've been talking about it even here in, in Minnesota with, we've been buying more land here. We might put like a, if we get enough money, put like a bunker or something, you know, with like some supplies and junk, just, just in case the zombie apocalypse comes or something. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll see what happens, but, um, Albert, I would just love to, to hear from, from you. You know, if someone is watching this video, they're in your shoes where they're like, are these guys legit? You know, do I know I can trust them? You know, what, what uh, would you say to that person that says, hey, tell us about Generation Family Properties and, and uh, what do you think about them? Like I said, initially what I had to do is I had to go and do my own research um, like I said, check with uh, other reviews, check with the Better Business Bureau, check with uh, with what you guys ha have online. Like there's different testimonials. Look into those other testimonials of other people. Like, I don't know if people watching will think I'm real, but you can look. I have a Facebook, Albert Palma. You can see that I'm like a real person. Um, like it's, uh, it's that kind of thing. I think the testimonials really do help the... Um, I guess, and once I got through that process of like seeing that it was like that you guys are like a, a leg legitimate uh, real estate company, then um, then I started talking to you guys, sent, uh, you know, sending emails stuff, and you guys are very prompt, always very like courteous, um, everything like I said, very professional. So I, I that gave me like a lot of. Um, confidence and then even when i would get nervous i'd be like oh no it's taking more than three days oh no this is taking more than four days like literally like a small amount of time but i would get nervous and then immediately you guys would say no no this, we have it all set up here's the here's what you need for this this so the the whole process kind of like almost like holding my hand through it which you know gives people like uh it just gives people like a little sense of security i guess i love it no thank you thank you for those words albert and uh, as we close out today any other closing thoughts you know you want to share with everyone here um, I, like I said, I, I've been more than happy with the whole experience. I'm personally super happy to have my own land finally for like once, uh, not having to rent, not having to, to deal with anyone else's, um, rules or regulations or telling me how to do this and that. Once you have your land, it's like your own, like you really do feel like you have something, uh, that's yours and that you can do it, you know, your way. So, uh, I don't want to go into the song like I did it my way. But uh, that's kind of like what I'm thinking. I like, you know what I mean? I love so, it. Uh, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, I think that that wraps it up for today. Albert, thank you so much for joining and hanging out with us. We appreciate you. And my friends, if you have any questions about land, the property you're looking at, certainly feel free to reach out to us. Um, Christy's email is sales at genfamland.com. That's sales at G-E-N-F-A-M land.com. Well, thank you, Albert, for hanging out with us. And my friends, make sure to tune in again. For the Land Stories podcast, this is Dave Denniston, where we are honored to help you find your land. Take care. Bye-bye.